Popular culture has taught us a lot about the first Thanksgiving, but not always with an adherence to the facts. Today, we're going to look at some of the popular myths around the Thanksgiving holiday. The pilgrims and natives gathered for a meal and called it Thanksgiving. The Mayflower, carrying English pilgrims, landed in America in 1620. In 1621, they celebrated a successful harvest with a three-day gathering. Members of the Wampanoag tribe attended, but they didn't call it Thanksgiving that year or any year after that until the 1830s. Squanto helped the pilgrims because he was a really nice guy. Squanto did help the pilgrims, but not for purely altruistic motives. Squanto, also known as Tusquantum, was helpful to the pilgrims, but his experience with Europeans started earlier. Six years before the pilgrims arrived, an Englishman had kidnapped Tusquantum from his village and taken him across the sea to Europe and tried to sell him into slavery in Spain. But the Spanish church intervened and helped Tusquantum. He was able to make his way to England, where he learned English. Eventually, he made his way back to America, where sadly he found that disease brought by European travelers had wiped out his entire village. The place where Tisquantum's village had been was now called Plymouth and was inhabited by pilgrims. Because of his command of English, Tisquantum was used as a go-between between the Wampanoag people and the pilgrims. While religious leaders used Squanto as an example of the noble savage, Squanto's decision to help the pilgrims was based partially in his poor relationship with his chief and his ability to use his relationship with the pilgrims to his advantage. The pilgrims invited the natives to a feast to celebrate peace and friendship. According to Wampanoag history, the relationship between the two groups began as a treaty between the Wampanoag leader, Yellow Feather, and John Carver, the first governor of the colony. The two groups agreed to mutually defend each other against their enemies, other tribes in the area. Thanks to the help of Squanto, the pilgrims had a good harvest and wanted to celebrate with a feast. According to one account, as part of the celebration, the pilgrims fired guns and cannons into the air. When the Wampanoag heard the commotion, they came running to honor their end of the treaty. They brought 90 Wampanoag warriors with them, who were then able to join the feast. The pilgrims came to the New World seeking religious freedom. The pilgrims originally left England and went to Holland, where they had religious freedom already. The pilgrims who went to America came to make money and to establish a religious theocracy or government based on religion. Also, they never actually called themselves pilgrims. They referred to themselves as separatists. The term pilgrim wasn't used to describe them until 1880. Turkey, sweet potatoes, stuffing, and pumpkin pie were served at the first Thanksgiving. Wild turkey may have been served at the 1621 event, but it would not have been the featured course. It is possible that wildfowl like passenger pigeon, duck, swan, or goose was also served. In some accounts, the Wapanoag are said to have brought five deer to the feast. Seafood, like shellfish and eels, were also eaten. There were no sweet potatoes growing in North America at the time the pilgrims arrived, so that would not have been on the menu. But they did have cornmeal, cranberries, blueberries, gooseberries, and succotash. The settlers could not have made pies because they had no flour for a crust and no ovens for baking. Instead, they could take a pumpkin, hollow out the shell, fill it with milk, honey, and spices, and roast the entire thing in hot ashes. The first Thanksgiving feast was at Plymouth. We think of the first Thanksgiving as being held in Plymouth, Massachusetts, but years earlier, in 1565, a Spanish fleet came ashore and had a celebratory feast with the native Timucuan people in St. Augustine, Florida. They ate salted pork and garbanzo beans. Americans have celebrated Thanksgiving ever since the Pilgrims did. After the Pilgrims, Thanksgiving was sometimes celebrated in New England, and National Days of Thanksgiving were sometimes declared by presidents. But it was not a national holiday until Sarah Josepha Hale got involved. Sarah Hale was an abolitionist who lobbied passionately to President Lincoln to declare Thanksgiving a national holiday. 
Sarah wrote books, editorials, and letters to state and federal governments arguing for Thanksgiving to be a holiday for everyone. After 35 years of lobbying, Sarah finally got her wish when President Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a national holiday. The holiday was in part due to Lincoln's goal of trying to create a sense of unity in a country divided by civil war. Incidentally, Thanksgiving wasn't Sarah Hale's only claim to fame. She's also the author of the nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Thanksgiving isn't a day of celebration for all Americans. For many Native Americans, the day is a reminder of all the injustices that their people have endured since the first Europeans arrived. In New England, some Native Americans recognize Thanksgiving Day as the National Day of Mourning. For them, this day is not about food and family, but for remembering solemnly tragic events, like the May of 1637, when settlers in Mystic, Connecticut slaughtered 700 members of the Pequot tribe and then celebrated with a day of Thanksgiving. In 2008, George W. Bush declared the Friday after Thanksgiving to be Native American Heritage Day. Ideally, Americans should study and know the history of all of their people so that they can better understand their past and better live their future.